Hi there, it's Mr. Robs. This is Mr. Song. Okay, and today we're going to do cumulative frequency. All right, and so in this thing, cumulative, what does cumulative mean as a word there, Mr. Song? Um, combined total. Total, yes. And so that implies to me adding things together up. Okay, so we have number of sleep hours of 21 students in this table here. So here's, so this table says two students slept four hours and five students slept five hours and so on. I want to fill in the cumulative numbers and those and use those to draw the cumulative frequency graph and don't forget to draw the graph. Well, in order to fill out this table here in the middle, what we do is we're going to accumulate, add. And so this is going to say I have already two students that have slept four hours. When I go to the next line, this is saying five hours, so this is saying how many students have slept five or less hours? Well, that's these five plus those two. And so I have seven students that have slept five or less hours. When I go to the next line, it's going to be how many students slept six or less? Well, what am I going to add for that then, Mr. Song? Well, there are four students that had six hours of sleep, so you have to add four. To the seven? To the seven. And I get... 11. Yeah. What's important in the cumulative uh, frequency graph is that the numbers on the cumulative column never gets smaller. Oh, good call. And so I continually add on the different hours. And so 2 will be 20. And so then one more is 21. So let's just pause for a moment. What in the world then does this number here mean, this 18? Could you interpret that number for me, Mr. Song? Hmm. 18 should be the number of students that slept eight hours or less. Great. Okay, so we have our table. That's the cumulative number of students. Okay, let's move on to the next scenario here. Okay, so now the next part says, oh, I've already done the cumulative here. I think our numbers were right. So now we want to graph it. And so I have a graph here, and I have to take these numbers and put them as such. On the bottom of my axis, I'm going to start at 4 and 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And this is hours of sleep. Make sure you label your axes. And on the y-axis is going to be the frequency the cumulative frequency. And I'll start here, I'll go 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and 21. Okay, and then what am I going to do now that I have it all kind of graphed like that, Mr. Song? What am I going to do? We'll start graphing. Okay. So, Four hours of sleep, two students. So I start right there. And five. There's seven students. Six. Eleven. And then seven. And fourteen. Eight and eight, eighteen. Eight and eighteen. Nine. Twenty. Oh, careful. There, there is no oh, nine. It's no a tricky nine. one. It's you move on to ten. Right. And then 10 will be 20. 20. Now I'm going to, I should actually take this one off here. Because we don't have the data for it. And then I have, uh, then I jump then to 12. It's 21. It actually, oh, you should. Ah, thank you. That's why I like yeah. to do it with someone so that they can catch my mistakes. This is 21 here. And so I am right there. And so once we plot the dots, then we try and make a curve as nice and smooth as possible, which on a computer is really hard to do. And you connect them up as such. And this is called our cumulative frequency graph. And so I'll put a nice title on it. What would you like to call this graph, Mr. Song? Mm. It'll be really long if you make it nice. Cumulative frequency of number of sleep, hours of sleep. Frequency of 
number of hours. hours of sleep. Super. Okay, so now we have a bunch of questions to, to answer for this. We have to find the median. Well, what in the world is the median again? Could it be the middle number? It is the middle number. Well, how many numbers do I have in total? How many students have I looked at? That's easy. You can just look at the last row of the cumulative number of students, and we have the total number of students, 21. Right. And so now if I want the middle number of 21, if I imagine I have my 21 students here, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 21, who's going to be the middle? What number position? Well, we should have 10 to the left and 10 to the right. That would make it 20. So the 11th student should be the middle number. Okay, the 11th. And so what we do is we go over to our graph and we find the 11th student, which is right here. At my 11th student, and I go across, and then I go down. And I can see that the median value is six hours of sleep. Okay, great. So now the lower quartile. The lower quartile is um, the bottom, the median of the bottom half. Right. So if this is 11 and this is 1, I want the middle number here in the middle. Isn't that going to be the sixth person? That's right. All right, because there's five here and then five to there. So I want the sixth person. So I go over to my graph, I find the sixth person, I go across, and then I go down, and I estimate as best as I can, and I think it's just a little bit more than five, so I'm gonna say 5.1. If I had a ruler, I could do it better, but I don't have one on my computer. The upper quartile, same discussion. I want this middle number here, if this is 11, and this is 21, I want to go, I need five numbers here and five numbers here. And so I believe that's going to be the 16th position, plus five, plus five, that works good. So the 16th position, I go over from 16 and down on this line here, and I get 7.5. And so from our cumulative frequency, I can start to get values for my box and whisker plot. And the final thing is state the maximum minimum values. Well, maximum I know is, uh, the maximum value here is 12 hours of sleep is the maximum. And the minimum was four hours of sleep. How are we doing here? All right, so now, Mr. Saw and I worked ahead and we're changing this question on the fly. Change this number to 19%. Now it says, what percent of students are, or, sorry, 19% of students are above so many hours of sleep? Well, what am I going to do with this 19% there, Mr. Song? Well, I have a total of 21 students. If I multiply that by 19% or 0.19, that'll give me the student. Right, and when I've done that, it's four. So I want 90% of the students are above so many hours of sleep. So I want to have four from 21. I want down here to be four. Did I read that correctly? 90% of the are above. Right. So. You can't go from the bottom because if you count four students from the bottom, you would have 19% of the uh, students sleeping less than that many hours. Right. So you have to start from the top. So I'm gonna start from the top. So here is 17, because that's 21 minus four, 17. I go across here and then I go down and I'm gonna estimate that to be 7.8 hours of sleep. Okay, so we have to use the 19 to find the position on the cumulative frequency side. All right, so here we are. We're continuing along now. To change my screen. This is going to be a mess. Okay, this screen now is asking me for 
box and whisker plot. I'm going to steal some of the information from the last slide. 5, 1, 7.5, 12, and 4. And let's see if I can erase this. Okay. So, we want to do F part, because we've done all the other parts. We want to do F, and F says to draw the box and whisker plot. The box and whisker plot. Well, we got all this information from the last slide, and so if I renumber these again at four, six, no, what is four, five, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, I can start to put these values on. I know 12 is a maximum here and a minimum of four. My median was six. My lower quartile was 5.1, approximately there, and 7.5 was my upper quartile. So I make my box, make my whiskers, and there's my box and whisker plot. This one we've already done. And finally, H says, find the middle 50% of test results lie between A and B, where A is less than B. Find A and B. Well, what are we gonna do for that, Mr. Song? Well, we know the lower quartile, which is a 25th percentile, uh -huh. and the upper quartile, which is a 75th percentile. So the middle 50% is between the lower and upper quartile. Right. And so that's the difference between those two. So that mean, must mean, so A must be 5.1 and B must be 7.5. And if I subtract these two, 7.5 minus 5.1, uh-oh. 2.4. Thank you. <laughs> this is a number value that we know. It represents the distance from here to here. What do we call that? IQR or interquartile range. Interquartile range. So, to summarize, we took our data and we were able from our data to make a cumulative frequency. From the cumulative frequency, we were able then to plot these points on a graph, get various values, and make a box and whisker plot.